All right, so in this question, what we're given is we have a bar. It's just a civil bar. It's a 25 millimeter you know, by 25 millimeter bar. And what we're told to do is to find the stress, the strain, and the deformation of the bar, right? To do that, we have to use some of the basic uh, strength of materials equations. So when we know, you know, when we're looking for stress, we know that the stress is basically just gonna be a force divided by some area. And stress also we know is gonna be this epsilon, which is strain, you know, times our modulus of elasticity. Okay, so likewise, um, you know, this last equation here, we have strain is defined as the deformation or the amount this thing gets longer or shorter times the initial length. And what we know for this problem is the deformation is gonna get longer because the bar's in tension. So these are the formulas that we're gonna to use to define these parameters. So let's get started. So to start with, we're just gonna go with stress. So stress is simply you know, equal to a force over an area, or in this case, we know that the force that we're given is 15 kilonewtons, and the area that we're given is you know, 25 millimeters times 25 millimeters so what we want to do is we want to get that into units that we like and to do that I'm going to multiply the top by a thousand newtons per kilonewton and that gives me essentially when we end up here we're going to end up with you know canceling out these kilonewtons we're going to end up with newtons per millimeter squared and what that gives us is it gives us 24 newtons per millimeter squared and we know that you know one Newton per millimeter squared equals one megapascal. So anytime we're doing stress, I like to get my units, especially in metric, into megapascals. So we'll keep coming here and we'll just say this equals 24 megapascals. So that's our stress in the bar. So check, we got box one. Okay, box two, let's look at strain. And you know, the obvious thing to do would be to come down here and say, well, strain equals delta over L. But the problem is we don't know how much this thing has stretched. Like we don't know what the change in length or the deformation is. But what we do know is we know sigma and we've been given the modulus of elasticity here. So when we do this, you know, we can just come down and solve for the strain equals, right? And we're gonna re rearrange this essentially where we divide both sides by E, but we're gonna get sigma divided by the modulus of elasticity. So what's this? Well, we're gonna have 24 megapascals divided by 200,000 megapascals. And you might be saying that looks like a small number, and it is. Okay, it's, it's very small, 0 0.00012. Uh, sometimes it's written as millimeters per millimeter or meter per meter, but essentially this is a unitless, you know, a unitless measure, right? Because the millimeters cancel out. Okay, and it's, a, it's kind of normalized if we think of it this way, where we have a delta deformation. Uh, divide by the initial length, okay? So this is uh, our, our strain. And then the last thing here that we can do is now we can use our, you know, our last formula, our strain formula here to come and back and solve for deformation because now we know our, our strain, we know our length, and we can solve for deformation. So let's uh, rearrange that a little bit. And what that's gonna look like is we're gonna have our delta equals, you know, epsilon times L. Or in other words, we're gonna say 0 0.00012 times, you know, three meters. And I like to put this into millimeters, so 1,000 millimeters per meter. And, you know, our units cancel out nicely here. We have meters going away. We're gonna be left with millimeters. And when we do this out, we get our deformation of 0 0.36 millimeters. All right, so that's good. So we went through, we solved, we got our stress, we got our strain, we got our deformation. But one of the things that I wanna point out here is there's an easier way to get deformation, right? So if we look at this, we can also recognize that with these formulas here, if we were just you know, write our stress equals epsilon times E formula, well, what we can do is we can plug in, right? So we know stress also equals you know, force over area, right? So the stress equals force over area. So we're gonna plug that in here. We know strain is delta over L. So we're gonna plug that in for strain and E just stays E. Okay, so the modulus of elasticity doesn't change. That's just our spring constant, essentially, for our linear elastic portion uh, of, of the load diagram. All right, so when we look at this now, what do we have? Well, what we have is we can solve directly for delta, the deformation, if we know these other pieces. So let's do that. And if we solve for delta, 
we get delta equals P, you know, multiply both sides by L times L over AE. All right, so this is a nice formula that we get. We have deformation delta equals PL over AE. And we can use this directly, right? So if we if we started with this, right, and all we had to do on this problem was to solve for the deformation, right? We could we could come in here and we could say, well, delta equals P, in other words, we have for 15,000 newtons times our length, which is, you know, 3,000 millimeters. So I'm doing some conversions on the fly, right? So 15 times 1,000, you know, three meters times 1,000 gives us 3,000 millimeters. And, you know, divide now by, well, if we do 25 times 25, that's gonna be 625 millimeters squared. So I'm just gonna put 625 millimeters squared, and then times our E, which is, you know, 200, thousand newton per millimeter squared. So again, a newton per millimeter squared, seven PA. When we do this out, we're gonna end up with the same thing. We're gonna end up with 0 0.36 millimeters. So really what we did is we kind of combined, you know, our P over A or, you know, our delta or deformation equation all into one, and we were able to solve for the deformation directly. So, you know, this is a formula we're gonna use over and over again um, as we go through some deformation problems here. So write it down, commit it to memory, and remember that delta equals PL over AE. And I wish I had a song that like made that, you know, fun or jingle, but delta equals PL over AE, don't forget it. All right, hey, I hope this helps, uh, but until next time, keep working hard and moving onward and upward.